What is going on guys? It's your boy Dylan the Villain and we're coming back at you once again with some more Total Extreme Wrestling 2020. It is Sunday week 2 of October 1997. We are playing as the WWF in the Attitude Era. And it is time for some Sunday Night Heat. In an abysmal pre-show matchup, Fit Finley defeats Sean Stasiak by pinfall with an Emerald Fusion. The match got a 51. Fit Finley with the 52 and John Stasiak with a 37 announced the color commentary gave the match a boost. Sean Stasiak, one of our future talents who is in um, developmental. And uh, we basically have been uh, barring him and let him work in front of uh, a bigger crowd, I guess you can say, uh, instead of our developmental crowd. And let him gain a little bit more pop and, and everything like that. Uh, but he is basically uh, jobbing, I guess is the word that we can say. We are going to move on. <clears throat> we are going to move on to the next segment. I apologize uh, in advance. I'm still trying to get over um, this flu that I have. And uh, my voice is slowly and surely coming back, but it's still cracking uh, in and out from time to time. So uh, thank y'all for y'all's patience and uh, everything with that. But we're going to move on to our next pre-show matchup, which is the primetime Brian Lee, who is in our ECW developmental, taking on one Lance Storm. And Lance Storm picks up the win by submission with a single leg grab. Match got a 59. That could have been on the main show. Brian Lee with a 43. Not bad. I kind of want him to get a little bit more pop, but not bad. And Lance Storm with a 64. Lance Storm slowly but surely gaining that pop like we want. We are going to move on to our opening segment of Sunday Night Heat, which is running down the card. Uh, the segment got a 90. It deserved better announcing and color commentary. I think we have Michael Cole and Rick Rude as our uh, color commentator. And we have Michael Cole as our announcer on Sunday Night Heat. Um, yeah. But uh, all the storylines gain uh, heat are advanced in this segment. But it is basically running down the match, uh, the night's match card. Um, our main event will be Billy Gunn of Astus taking on one half of the WWF World Tag Team Champions, Devon Dudley. As we know, Astus was the former Tag Team Champions. And they lost it to the Dudleys. The Dudleys have been pretty much bullying them. And um, applying that, As Dust is not just a tag team, but there's something more going on with As Dust. That they're more than just uh, friends. That they're special friends. If you catch my meaning here, we will also uh, so they them two will be taking on each other here tonight in the main event. We will also see Doctor Def Steve Williams as he. Viciously attacked um, Ken Shamrock last week on Sunday Night Heat. And we are going to close out the show. And we have a big announcement from Vince McMahon. Here tonight, our match got a 90. This segment got a 90. And we move on to our opening contest of the night. Which is the Pitbulls taking on the Godwins. An abysmal pre-show match. The Pitbulls defeat the Godwins in 7 <clears throat> In 736, when Pitbull number one pinned Henry O'Goblin with a super power bomb, the match got a 38. Yeah. Pitbull number two with a 47, Pitbull number one with a 48, and the Godwins with a 47 and 46, res respectively. Pitbulls have the tag team specialist bonus along with the Godwins. Announcing color commentary lifted the match, uh, and the crowd was turned off by having a match outside of the pre-show 
between workers that they were not interested in. This segment got a 38. Uh, I mean, one of our pre-show matches, uh, I think both our pre-show matches did better than this. So, uh, yeah, that was that was the problem with the Pitbulls um, and the Godwins. Uh, they're just not over enough, I guess, is the word that I'm looking for. And uh, we need to try to get them more pop. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the Pitbulls. I love the Pitbulls in ECW. And uh, I would love to push the Pitbulls as one of my, one of the top tag teams here in the World Wrestling Federation. Um, but again, the crowd was turned off by having a match that they believe should have been on the pre-show, which I don't blame them. Uh, we're going to move on to our next segment. Which we see, we see, uh, we see Mark Marrow in in the back, you know, and uh, it's just, this is like um, before the show starts, you know, and like they're arriving at the arena and, and fans are running up, you know, and can I get your autograph? Can I get your autograph? And Mark Marrow, you know, he's he's just like, well, certainly, you know the. The fans are just like, uh, not you. Uh, we want we want Sable's autograph, you know. Like, no no offense. Like, we don't even know who you are. And he's like, what the hell? You don't know who I am? I'm I'm the fabulous Mark Merrow. Are you, are you serious? Why the hell do you want her autograph and stuff? And Sable looks looks mad. You hear Scott Steiner come out. Uh, you 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 hear Scott Steiner in the background. And uh. My voice is too messed up to do a, my Steiner impersonation. So I apologize for robbing you of my Scott Steiner. But Scott Steiner comes up and he's... And I can't do a Scott Steiner without doing Scott Steiner. But um, Scott Steiner comes up and he says, You know, hey, you, like, you shouldn't be jealous that nobody knows your name. Because before last week... I didn't even know your name. I didn't even know that you were in the company. But I don't like what you're doing to to stable to stable over here. You're treating her like dirt. You're pushing her around, and I don't know why she's with a man like you when she could be with a genetic freak like me. And Mark Merrill's like, you know what? I'm sick and freaking tired of you, Scott. You know. You, you walk around here and you say that you're a big man and how big and bad you are and, and how great you are. He's like, why don't you prove how great you are tonight in a match with me? And Scott Steiner's just like, oh yeah. I, I will I will love to, love to be in a match with you tonight. So there we have it. We're going to have a match between Scott Steiner and Mark Merrill here tonight. The segment did get a 69 nice uh the storyline lost heat scott steiner was the real star in the segment uh mark merrow underperformed scott steiner uh cut an amazing promo scott steiner known from his for his amazing promo work and mark merrow uh struggled without having a strip to follow uh color commentary rick frood gave the segment a boost we move on to our next segment I, i'm sure rick frood had something to say uh about about sable and you know, all that good stuff. But we're going to move on to our next segment. Which is a matchup between Jushin Thunderlager and the Prince Brian Lawler. And Jushin Thunderlager picks up a big win against the Prince Brian Lawler. The Prince Brian Lawler with a 52. And Jushin Thunderlager with a 54. The segment got a 54. And after the matchup. Deserved better announcing. That's fine. After the matchup, uh, Jerry the King Lawler is kind of like talking down to the Prince Brian Lawler. And, you know, like we really can't hear what he's saying, you know, in the ring. And as Liger kind of like gets out of the ring and he kind of stands there and, and looks for a minute and looks on. And Jerry the King Lawler is like just talking down to Brian Lawler and just... You know, like, you're a disgrace. You're, you're, like, 
you, you're a prince and you ain't acting like one. You're, you're supposed to carry on my legacy and you're just acting, you know, you're <coughs> like pretty much like uh, uh, you're an embarrassment to, to my name. And Juicin Liger kind of, he stands there and he kind of slides back into the ring and, you know, he's just like, hey, man, like, calm down, you know. And Jerry the King Lawler is like, look, you want some, right? I don't even know why my son has to wrestle some Japanese guy like you who can't even speak English, let alone do anything. My son has the look, my son has the skills, my son has the charisma, and he's going to lose to a guy who can't even get a title shot here in the World Wrestling Federation. And Liger kind of stands there and he's just like, like, what the hell, you know? And Jerry the King Lawler is like, oh, you, you want a match, huh? You want a match? He goes, well, next week on Sunday Night Heat, he's like, I'll give you a match. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a match that you'll never forget. Right? He goes, I'll tell you what. He goes, why don't you go find yourself a tag team partner and I'll team up with my son and we'll send you back to all Japan, New Japan, Old Japan, it doesn't matter what Japan, we're going to send you back to, to it. <coughs> and Liger kind of stands there and he, he shakes his head. He's like, all right, yeah, you're on. So next week, we're going to have a tag team matchup between Brian Lawler and Jerry the King Lawler versus Jushin Thunder Liger and a tag team partner of his choice. The segment got a 78, and we move on to the next segment. As we go on to the match between Mark Merrow and Scott Steiner in a decent match, Mark Merrow defeats Scott Steiner by pinfall after cheating. He hits Scott Steiner with a low row and, and pins him. He doesn't use the legal ropes, you know. Uh, during the match, he uh, the, the fans are Googling Sable, and uh, he tells Sable to go to the back, you know what I'm saying, and uh, he starts screaming, and, and this is what gives them the upper hand, you know, and Scott Steiner kind of grabs him and he, you know, does the boom, like the mule kick in the dick, and uh, which gives him the win, distracting the referee, that type of thing, and Mark Merrow picks up the win. The segment lost heat uh, because of that 90 opening segment, and it's, the match got a 71, but Mark Merrow picks up the win. We go to commercial, and we come back, and we see Billy Gunn with Goldust in China, and Goldust is like, ooh, Billy, tonight you have an opportunity to show them that ass dust is not just a flash in the pen tag team, that we are not just friends, but we are more than friends. Billy just kind of looks at him and he's like, like, what the, f like, what? He goes, we're, we're best friends. <coughs> Billy kind of, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, that, yeah. <coughs> and Billy, Billy kind of stands there and he goes, look, Goldie. He goes, I know me and you. We won those tag team championships. And I know that you love this tag team more than anything. Hell, I didn't think I would enjoy teaming up with you in China. But tonight is more than the World Tag Team Championships. Tonight, it's more than our tag team. Tonight, it's about standing up to every single person who's ever bullied you in your life, Goldie. Have you ever been bullied? Goldie's just like, why? Yes. Yes, I have, by the Dudleys. And Billy Gunn's like, but before that, have you ever been bullied? And Goldust is like, well, now that you think of it, <coughs> I guess you could say I'm a natural when it comes to uh, handling myself. Billy Gunn kind of smirks a little bit. He goes, yeah, I figured you would say something like that. He goes, look, tonight, I'm going to go out there 
and I'm going to make you proud, Goldie. And anybody who's ever been bullied, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to show them what you're supposed to do to a bully. And Goldust is like, my word, how, ooh, how, how exciting. He's like, I'm, I'm all excited. I can't wait for that, for that. Well, good luck in your match tonight, Billy. And Billy's like, thanks. You know, Goldust and China walk off. Uh, Goldust improvised good. Not so called time to carry the match. But Goldust benefited from having a hot new catchphrase. And asked us, storyline advances the game heats. Second, I got a 35. We move on to our next segment. Which is Steve Williams. Dr. Def Steve Williams. As he defeats one Bradshaw. And about that had good good heat and decent wrestling. Steve Williams beats him with the Oklahoma Stampede. The match got a 63. Nice. Not bad. Uh, Steve Williams with the 78 and Bradshaw with a 59. Uh, Dutch Mantel does some good ring work. And Steve Williams benefited from having a hot new move. And after the match, Dutch Mantel grabs on the microphone. And he goes, ladies and gentlemen. You see, you have this guy who thinks he's a badass, that he's a, some type of tough man called Ken Shamrock, who ain't even here this week because this man laid his ass out last week. You seen it, I seen it, we all seen it. I don't need to tell you what happened last week. Y'all seen what happened. Y'all know what happened. He wants to parade around here and think he's some type of badass because he does MMA. Well, let me tell you something. There's no man who's more of a badass, who's more of a destroyer, who's more of a tough man than Dr. Death Steve Williams. Shamrock, you can go train for your little UFC fight all you want to. You can go train for your tough man competition and hope that you become a world champion over there. But let me tell you something. Everybody knows that you're a phony and everybody can see through your act. You claim to be the world's baddest man. Well, you ain't the world's baddest man. Dr. Def Steve Williams is the world's baddest man. And if you have the balls to show your face here next week on Sunday Night Heat, then Dr. Death will prove to you, not only you, but all these fans in the arena tonight and the fans watching at home that they shouldn't even tune in to your little MMA fight, your, your UFC or whatever they calling it over there. Shouldn't even tune in and watch you fight because Dr. Death is going to show everybody what's going to happen in two months when you get your little ass whipped by whoever you're facing. So I'll see you next week, Shamrock, if you even got the balls to show up. Because after next week, the era of death will begin. The segment advanced and gained heat. The segment got a 62. Could have did better. I thought it was going to do better. Dutch did some good ring uh, improvised well. Now it's a color commentary. And Dutch benefited from having a hot new catchphrase. And we move on to our main event here tonight. When Billy Gunn takes on Devon Dugley and about that had a decent reaction for the crowd. Devon Dugley defeats Billy Gunn by pinfall with a Dugley death drop. I don't know why. That would be his regular finish move, the 3D. And singles after falling interference by Bubba Ray Dugley. I would say that, you know, Bubba Ray comes in and hits the 3D with Devon. I don't know how that's going to work, but uh, he was supposed to just distract Billy Gunn and uh, pick up pick up the win here tonight. Uh, Billy Gunn with a 57 and Devon with a 64. The Astus storyline advances, but loses the seat. Sammy got a 66. We move on to our next segment which is 
the Dudleys, they celebrate as Gold Dust and China come down to help Billy Gunn. As the Dudleys hold up the Tag Team Championships and basically say, you're never going to beat us for these titles. You might as well give up. Y'all are never going to beat us for these titles. You know, you're, you're not going to beat us. Second, we got a 84 uh, storyline gain back his heat. Not to color commentary, gave the match a boost. Gold Dutch benefited from having a hot new catchphrase. We move on to our next segment of the night, which is the huge announcement by Vince McMahon. As he says, he comes out to the ring with Shane and he goes, I know. That having an announcement on Sunday Night Heat is kind of a kind of a weird thing because we usually save our announcements for Monday Night Raw or SmackDown. But he's just like, I wanted to get this news out here as quickly as possible to let y'all know what's in store for Monday Night Raw. Raw, Raw is war. He says, you see, we had these guys. We have these guys. Give me one. Second. We have these guys who are free agents, as they like to call themselves, that they somehow work themselves into lucrative one-of-a-kind contracts to where they can appear on any show, anytime, anywhere, and appear for my competition, but also can appear for me, Vince McMahon. You see, I'm not one who likes to promote and advertise wrestlers from a different brand or wrestlers who are not signed to the World Wrestling Federation. We here at the World Wrestling Federation believe that we should push our own talent, not talent from an outside organization, not talent from somewhere else around the world. Especially two former superstars who turned their back on the World Wrestling Federation many two years ago and joined my competition because they believe they wasn't getting a fair cut of the pie, as you can say here in the World Wrestling Federation. But with the recent actions of these two men, along with their so-called leader, Sting, I have no other choice but to give in to these two men's demands and let them appear on my wrestling television program. You see, they've been causing problems for their former colleagues, our World Wrestling Federation World Heavyweight Champion, Triple H. And they've been trying to position themselves on the card to where they'd be able to irritate one Triple H into giving them a title shot. As long as I'm the chairman of the World Wrestling Federation, that will never happen. Or at least, I thought I was going to say that. Until one Triple H came in and demanded that I give him a match against one Scott Hall or one Kevin Nash. He didn't care who it was. He wanted to teach them a lesson. And that's the attitude that I want out of my wrestlers here. And the World Wrestling Federation as we enter a new era in the World Wrestling Federation. 
I want my rest. I want my wrestlers to ex to express attitude. To have a newfound power, anger, that ruthless aggression, as you will. To give them an edge over our competition. But we also have another superstar, another fellow wrestler on the roster who wants to get his hands on those two men also. And that's Shawn Michaels. Now we all know that Shawn Michaels and Triple H haven't seen eye to eye here recently. But Shawn Michaels said it best. The enemy of my enemy is now my friend. So it pains me to say that I have gotten contact with Kevin Nash and Scott Hall's manager, their agent. And they have agreed to a match against Shawn Michaels and Triple H. But they will be doing a contract signing on Monday Night Raw to sign their match for the main event of to their match at no mercy. If the contracts do not meet their liking, then they can refuse the matchup. But I promise you, as Vince McMahon, I will do whatever it takes to deliver this matchup here at no mercy to give you, not only you, the fans, y'all's money was worth, but put an end to this hostile takeover as they like to call it. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Vince McMahon, I am the WWF Chairman, and I will be seeing y'all at the contract signing on Monday Night Raw. Thank you. It was like a pre-recorded message type thing, and we're going to go ahead and finish the show. Still got an 82, not bad, not a bad little show. Wasn't expecting it to do fantastic, but eh, not a bad little show. We're going to go ahead and finish it. Michael Starr. Is that the Michelle? Michelle Starr. <coughs> All right, let's see what we got here. WCW Worldwide. We'll take a look at that. Not too much in the world of wrestling here. Not too much. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, yeah. But my name is Dylan the Villain, guys. Thank y'all for watching. I, like always, the if you are new to the channel and like what you see, the subscribe icon will be over the Sunday Night Heat logo. If you like this episode and want to go back and watch previous episodes to catch up with the story, that playlist will be right here and. Not the toot my own horn, but toot toot. If you want to go see the best match of the save, that episode will be right here. Between the amazing rematch between Kurt Angle and Rey Mysterio Jr., which got us the best rating of the save. I will not say what number it was, but it got the best match rating of the save so far I'm very proud of it um, if you want to go back and watch that episode that that will be right here my name is Dylan Villain thank y'all for watching like always thank y'all for liking the video commenting down below I get back to every single one of these comments whether it's on the Pro-Am Gaming uh, YouTube channel or my personal YouTube channel I comment back and will reply to you um, thank y'all for watching like always and like we say here at Pro Am Gaming if you can't play with each other do what I'm doing right now and play with yourself and we will see y'all on Raw is War.